Well, fine, good afternoon, everyone. This is Patricia, and I am traveling for history. I'm in Shoreham, Vermont today, and th this is Larrabee's Point. I wanted to make sure I got here before the ferry opened, May, and in 2022, it's going to open May 18, which is Wednesday next week, because today's Saturday. Anyway, I've been wanting to film this for quite some time, and uh, although it's closed and private and I can't really go anywhere, it's still a beautiful sight. So, let me tell you about it. Let's do a little bit of exploring. And um, I, I think you'll like it as much as I. So, all of this is the Larrabee's Point Complex. All this right here. The Larrabee's Point Complex consists of a collection of ferry-related buildings and structures at the western end of Vermont Route 74 and Shoreham, Vermont. Included are facilities currently used by the oldest operating ferry on Lake Champlain, the Ticonderoga Larrabee's Point Ferry, and two buildings historically associated with the ferry operation. The complex was listed on the National Register of Historic Places in 1980. Larrabee's Point is located in southwestern Shoreham, on the eastern shore of Lake Champlain, at a narrow point in the lake opposite Ticonderoga, New York. John Larrabee purchased the land in this area in 1787 and in 1799 received permission from the state to operate a ferry. By 1875, the Larrabee's Point Complex included a large hotel and a wharf capable of docking large steamships that carried tourists on the lake. The ferry's importance in commercial freight transportation declined in the second half of the 19th century due to the arrival of the railroads in Addison County. The stone warehouse, standing adjacent, <laughs> really I can't see anything through my viewfinder, it's so bright. Anyway, the ferry's importance in commercial freight transportation declined, and the stone warehouse standing adjacent to the current ferry slip built in 1823 is a surviving reminder of this historic importance. The historic elements of the Larrabee's Point Complex include the ferry slip area, still in use by the modern ferry, and the adjacent stone wharf. And that stone wharf is um, right over here. Think you can all see that, eh? Yes. And let me zoom in for you so you better look. The three-story stone warehouse standing at the land side of the wharf now houses the Lake Cruise Ship Service. Across from Vermont 74 from the warehouse stands the circa 1835 house of John Larrabee, a brick two-and-a-half-story structure. If I'm not mistaken, it would be this place over here. Let me get back into view for you for that. Oh, everything, look at the leaves coming back on the trees. Isn't that spectacular? But it makes my job a little harder. <laughs> Merely, I can't even see. There we go. All right, uh, this right here. And if I zoom in for you. You can see my pictures on Instagram or Facebook, Traveling for History, 1L and Traveling. So this house is a particularly fine example of transitional federal and Greek revival architecture. With a later Victorian porch extending across the lake facing front. The small wood frame building housing the ferry office between the ferry slip and the warehouse is not historic. This uh, wooden building right here. I think, I think we would know that, right? Uh, but in case we don't, this building right here is not historic. But you know, given enough time, it will be. <laughs> All right. So I wanted to read you something else here because there's one of these historic boards. It's uh, actually a state historic marker. I didn't realize that until just recently when I read about it. So pretty interesting. First, let me show you 
show, show it to you, and then I'll have my camera pointed at something more interesting than uh, looking at that. There we go. John Larrabee established the first regular ferry here under a grant from the Vermont legislature when the only business at the site was his tavern. In 1823, the year that the Champlain Canal opened, Larrabee and Samuel Holly built a store and warehouse. A lively trade with the inland towns soon supported three stores, all supplied directly from Troy or Albany, New York. Among the goods exported to the world from Larrabee's Point, mer merino sheep commanded the highest prices. Shoreham farmers bred some of the most famous ewes in the country, shipping them to western ranches from this dock, a practice that helped to undermine the Vermont wool industry. Travelers could catch a line boat down the lake or a packet heading through the canal. On his way to Fort Ticonderoga in 1835, Nathaniel Hawthorne observed, quote, the continual succession of travelers who spent an idle quarter of an hour in waiting for the ferry boat, affording me just enough time to make their acquaintance, penetrate their mysteries, and be rid of them without the risk of tediousness on either side, unquote. <laughs> How true is that, right? The buildings clustered around this landing are listed on the National Register of Historic Places, but hotels have all disappeared. There is no sign of the Lake House Hotel that offered lawn tennis, boating, bathing, fishing, and dancing in 1871. It says that, let me show you the picture here. Oh yeah, there we go. So the United States Hotel, which is on the left, uh, built by Samuel Holley and B.B. B. Brown in 1838, burned sometime after 1886. The stone house, which I've pointed out to you, but we're going to walk in front of it shortly. The first store at Larrabee's Point was built out of stone taken from the ruins of Fort Ticonderoga. How interesting is that? I know. I can't, uh, I can't stand it myself either. Alrighty. So let's uh, continue on for a little walk. You can see the... Um, uh, admittedly, I'm enjoying the view from here. Holy cow. Enjoying the view. But uh, I, also enjoy the, oops, I also enjoy the view of uh, buildings, as you know, especially those on the National Register. Can't tell you how long I've been wanting to come down here and film. So it's really nice to be down here now. And the road to get here, uh, 74 was devoid of other cars. Mine was the only one on the road, stunningly enough. All right. Now, ooh, mayflies, yuck, yuck, yuck. They're everywhere. This place has lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of no parking signs, private residence signs, which is good. If you have a private residence down here, the last thing you want is someone parking in your driveway. So we can see from this sign, Shoreham is five miles from here, Middlebury is 18 miles, and Brandon is 20 miles. Now Shoreham and Middlebury are in Addison County, Brandon is in Rutland County. They're very close to one another, as you can imagine. And then State Highway begins right here, where the private property ends, and then we have the Welcome to Vermont sign, the Green Mountain State. And right here, I'm gonna step out of the sun. Oh yeah, out of the sun, yay. So this is private parking, private residence. It's hard to see it in the, uh, the light behind it, but that's a little better. You can see the hoist at the top here. Reminds me a lot of um, the old stone store in Burlington. I'll, I'll include a link down below. You'll see what I mean. Uh, stone, well, old stone store, so stone construction. This was the first store. Uh, this was a great way to bring in um, the goods on those two floors. Uh, so, yeah. Beautiful place. Really beautiful place. An absolutely spectacular view. Let's walk a little bit more up the road here. There was another car here. 
SUV, did, did, did a U-turn and left. Wow, look at that gorgeous view. How could anyone not love that, right? Alrighty, well, this is Patricia and I'm traveling for history. If you like my content, please subscribe to my channel, 177 and growing. Thank you so much for subscribing. Really makes me very happy, truly appreciate it. I'm uploading every day of the week still. It's been over a year now, well, just about a year, maybe. Maybe another couple of weeks, it'll be a full year of uploading daily. Um, so, let's take a quick look, see at these lights here, just notice them. These look like big, big, big Christmas lights. <laughs> Christmas tree lights. Let's see, I see red and green and blue right here. Private parking, by the way. And over here, we have red, yellow, and blue. Looks like they're solar lights. See the uh, solar pieces up here? Looks like those are solar operated. And over here. You see people can park right along here. We see the railroad ties, right? These are railroad ties. Ironic that the very thing that uh, that killed this ferry service, or at least uh, lessened its impact, was railroads, and they've got railroad ties, but that's just me. All right. Well, again, Instagram. Instagram and uh, Facebook, Traveling for History, One Ellen Traveling. On Twitter, Traveling for High, that's one, H-I with a numeral one. And certainly my YouTube channel, Traveling for History, which you're watching right now. Thanks for watching. Appreciate that. This is Patricia, and I am traveling for history. And until I see you again, have a great night. Thanks for watching. Bye.